Good morning. Such is the nature of life that all it asks and all it wants is the opportunity to appear. You are that opportunity and so am I. And so it is. Welcome to CSL Midtown broadcasting to you this morning from Atlanta, Georgia. We're so glad that you have joined us today. We welcome all people, no matter who you are and where you are in your life. Our center reflects the beautiful, diverse tapestry of life that is everywhere present. So we welcome you, whoever you are and whatever path brought you to be here today. We know that you are an individual expression of the divine life in which we all live. You are welcome to participate here today and to become part of this community in whatever way serves you. For a better understanding of who we are and what we teach, listen now to our Declaration of Principles written by our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes. I believe. I believe. I believe in one God. One absolute power and first cause to all things. I believe that this power is perfect love. And creates out of a desire to express love. I believe all thought is creative and how I choose to think creates my personal experience. I believe in the unity of all life. And the immortality of the individual soul. Forever unfolding. I believe. I believe. I believe in the eternal goodness. The eternal goodness of God. The eternal loving kindness. And the eternal givingness of God to all. And so it is. And so it is. And so it is. All right. The full declaration of principle from Ernest Holmes is available on our website, cslmidtown.org. My name is Judy Ailey, and I am the moderator and the practitioner for today's service. This morning, we have a fabulous guest speaker. More about that later. Um, But anyway, recently, I was reading in the book, Living the Science of Mind by Ernest Holmes, that we need to claim our divine inheritance. And you might say, what does this mean? What is my divine inheritance? How can I claim it? We in this teaching believe that we are created by God to live a life of abundance of every good thing, that we have all been given this, that this is our divine inheritance. It is ours, not because we have done in something hard or accomplished something big or that we work and strain, but it is simply ours by being who we are Creatures created by God out of love to express life in all of its goodness. Sometimes people ask me, they say, what is the will of God? What's the will of God for me? I don't think that's the will of God for me. Well, I can tell you that the will of God for you and for me and for all of us is to live lives that are full of every good thing. Lives that allow us to thrive physically to live in love and peace and joy and abundance. But, you know, sometimes it's not easy as it sounds because we live in this world where we have to sometimes listen to things that, that don't necessarily say that. And, and, you know, we accept the appearance of things around us as truth. But in this teaching, we believe something different. We believe, believe that we were created by God as heirs to this potentiality of goodness of every kind. And as an heir, we have to accept our inheritance. This is the divine inheritance that I'm speaking of. So we stand in faith and belief, knowing that the divine inheritance of every good thing is ours. And we accept that this is so. And as we know that this is true, it follows that there is always going to be more than enough. I'd like to lead us now in a spiritual mind treatment or affirmative prayer, which will be followed by some music. And then I will come back and introduce our guest speaker. But I offer these words in the first person. Please accept them for yourself as I lead us in this affirmative prayer. All right, just allow yourself to be comfortable 
and to relax and to just bring your attention to this present moment, to where we are right here and right now. And know that as we do this and as we breathe and we just let go of anything that we've been thinking about or wondering about or focused on, we bring our attention to this moment right here and right now. We know that we exist in this presence, in this power, this universal good, this life force that we call God, that we call spirit, that we call universal mind, and that it is everywhere present. It is, it is, it is closer than the air that we breathe. We are immersed in it. It is filling us. We are living and having our our life in it right here and right now. And as I know the truth about that and the truth about this presence and this power, I know that I am one with this power, that I am absolutely immersed in it, filled with it, and that this is a power for good. This power can accomplish all things. There is nothing too great for this power to transform into its good. And so I just know that the truth for me today, right now, is that all is absolutely well in my life, that I lead a life that is absolutely the expression of this presence and this power, and that I allow this power to express through me as vibrant health, as love, as abundance, as joy, as peace, as divine creative new ideas. And I just allow myself to relax into the flow of this goodness coming through my life. And I just accept that this is my truth and I allow it to be so. So I accept my divine inheritance that I am created by this loving presence, that I am created as a perfect spiritual being having this human experience and that my experience as a human is good in every way. I turn away from any idea of struggle and strain, of lack or limitation or frustration of any kind. I just know that that's not the truth of me. And instead, I sink into this knowing that I am one with this presence, one with this power, one with this goodness. And for this, I am so grateful. I'm grateful to be here today to hear the words of our speaker and that knowing that I will hear something today and learn something today at a deeper level than I have ever known before and that I will benefit and thrive from my experience in my participation today. So I'm grateful for this. I release this treatment now knowing that it is so and so it is. Well, all right. We are blessed to have a fabulous guest speaker this morning. To begin with, I mean, his bio was so amazing. I was kind of blown out of the water, but he's written books. Um, he's the author of It's So Easy When You Know How. And his newest book is called Obvious Power, The Secrets of Habits and Attitudes. He's also been featured in some New Thought movies, one of which was called The Luminaries. Another was What is New Thought? He is the founder of the New Thought Center in San Diego. He's co-founder and past president of the affiliated New Thought Network, um, co-founder and senior minister of New Thought Ministries of Oregon. He's been a keynote speaker to, for all these major organizations for New Thought, and here he is in our community. Um, for 11 years, he served as a senior spiritual director for Centers for Spiritual Living. And this was really amazing to me that in 1999, he joined a select group of civic and spiritual leaders to meet with the Dalai Lama in India to talk about global challenges and to discuss possible solutions. He is currently serving on the Minister Council for Centers for Spiritual Living. He continues to maintain an independent counseling ministry as a spiritual life coach, and he also teaches at the Home Institute School a spiritual leadership. He and his wife live in Topanga, California, which is in Northern California. And just, and he has six grandchildren. And just before the, we started broadcasting, he said that his main ministry right now is something called coffee with Casper and Casper is his 
beautiful golden retriever. So please join me in welcoming today's speaker, whose talk title is More Than Enough. Join me in welcoming Dr. Harry M Morgan Moses. Here he is. Thank you for being here. We're so excited. Well, I'm honored to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I like that uh, song by Daniel Lehman, More Than Enough. Uh, that's really cool. Actually, that whole idea of more than enough, uh, Dr. David Walker, who's no longer with us, one of the great leaders in religious science, um, he used to tell his congregation all the time, you, you're enough, that, that somehow people don't really believe they're enough. And uh, Ralph Wild Emerson said a long time ago, uh, if you but knew who you were, the sun and the stars could not hold you. So I like to talk about one of the things we talk about on Coffee with Casper all the time is viewing your life, viewing all of life from the perspective of your soul. So that's really what we're talking about today, because, you know, we could say I am uh, I am happy. I am love. I am light. I am joy. I am bored. I am mad. I am confused. And which one is the real you? Right? And I love the expression from the Tibetan Book of the Dead. And the, that expression is, you came from the light, you put on a coat of skins, and you will return to the light. So who I am, what I am, my soul nature is the way I believe we are designed to see the world. Not to look from our personal self or from any given moment or state of consciousness we might be in at any given moment, but to look from that place that came from the light. The 12th century mystic, uh, Meister Eckhart, uh, said the soul has two faces. One is gazing at the glory of God, and the other is directing the senses. So the line that I put in uh, about this talk is that all the aspects of your being belong, but it is your higher self that reveals the pathway of your intuition. All of, the, you know, all of my parts belong, but they're not who I really am. Who I am is that soul, that eternal, birthless, deathless, changeless, forever expanding idea in the mind of God, which right now is named Harry Morgan Moses, and your name, whatever that is right now. But you came from the light, and you are known in the light as, as the I am that I am, that the, that the I am that I am, the I am that Jesus was, that Moses was, that Buddha was that each of us is, is that, is that soul that's gazing at the infinite glory of, of energy itself. And we're not separate from that energy. There's only one energy. Energy and matter are equal and interchangeable. E energy never dies. It changes form. And so we are energy encapsulated in the body. And yet what we are is something much greater than the body. I am not, I don't just end at the top of my head and the bottom of my toes. Uh, I am an immortal spiritual being, superior to my mind, to my body, and to my experience. And the more we begin to dwell from that perspective, to look at our lives from that place where I came from the light to put on a coat of skins in order to express that light in the world. And all of us who are alive in this day to day, particularly uh, one of the things that I often talk about on Coffee with Casper and we share all the time is, is that you and I are vibrating at a certain level. We're vibrating at a certain level today that, that we have room in our consciousness to connect with all of those who are vibrating in and around the same vibration that we are creating. Right? So it's not like I just have one, one person or one, it's all of the people in your life are those who are responding to what we call, what Ernest Holmes called the law of mind, which can also be called the law of the circle. Where my energy goes, where my attention flow goes, my energy flows. And what happens is this law of mind or the law of the circle, it takes the sum total of everything we've ever thought, said, done, or felt. And it creates, all of that creates that vibration that we're emanating out. And that vibration that we're emanating out returns to us as our experience. So if you're dwelling in fear and doubt and worry and anxiety or dwelling in the 
obstacles in the race mind, meaning the whole race uh, hasn't learned that war is not healthy for children and other living things. The whole race does not know that the I am that I am is the same I am that you are, regardless of race, color, creed, way of being, that all people belong. Ernest Holmes, the poet, who was also the philosopher, said, there's room in my house for all. Enter and be not afraid. I have set a place for you where the sunbeams dance through the shade. Sit, relax, and refresh your soul. Eat of the fruit, drink of the wine, build your life in this divine self that you are, that came, and I believe we all came, with a mission and purpose. And the mission and purpose that we came into this lifetime has to do with a world awakening. We are immersed in a world of awakening. Those of you who are uh, more mature, right, remember uh, the, the play Hair, and there was a very popular song uh, done by a group called The Fifth Dimension, called This is the Dawning of the Age of Aquarius where peace will guide the planet and love will steer the stars. And now, if we came into this lifetime knowing that you were part of that, that you were part of bringing forth the dawning of a new age, you may you, you are, and you may have also been disappointed that that new age has not revealed itself into a greater, into the greater mass of humanity than it has. We're guessing in terms of enlightened souls that recognize there's only one life, that life is in you, that life is in me, and it's the same life, that the glory of the Most High is, is revealing itself to us and is the voice of our intuition, and this is where we're going today. It's the voice of our intuition. Now, intuition, as Ernest Holmes said, is the voice of the divine, is the voice of God in the human being. So while all of the parts of ourselves belong, the part that has fear is not, is not, shouldn't be driving the car. The part that is worried about whether you're deserving, that shouldn't be driving the car because you're more than enough. You are the glory of the most high, gazing at the glory of God. And the other part of your soul is guiding you, directing you, leading you into the paths that fulfill all of your dreams. But you might remember the, play South Pacific, there was a lyric in the song that says, you, you got to have a dream because if you don't have a dream, how are you going to make a dream come true, right? And you and I have a dream. And that dream is, and here's an affirmation that I learned many years ago. I've been teaching forgiveness for over 30 years. And one of the great affirmations that one of my teachers taught me, which I just, from the moment I heard it, I said, boy, that is right on the money. And here's the affirmation. I choose to comfortably live my life and fulfill my purpose. I choose to comfortably live my life and fulfill my purpose. The time of life where, where suffering and strain and penance and repentance and all, all of those things that, that, that I suffer, that I might be more clear, that I might be more alive, that I might be more of service to the divine, your suffering is not bringing anything to the world. You're participating in the anger, the fear, the prejudices, the doubts, the backwardsness of people who believe that violence is a solution. The, these things have served humanity as much as they possibly can, and they now need to be transformed. Transformed into that which Judge Thomas Troward called heaven's first law, the law of harmony. The universe itself must be governed by a principle of harmony, because otherwise, you would go back into the realm of duality. Well, then if there's really just good and evil, then good could lose. Evil could uprise and destroy eternality. And eternality is not destroyable. Energy is not destroyable. It changes form. The forms of energy change. And so the forms of humanity, humanity's inhumanity to itself, humanity's inhumanity to itself, is not, is not helping anymore because we're the same thing. The life force in you is the life force in me. The beautiful in you is the beautiful in me. The good in me is the good in you. It's the same good available to each of us individuality at, individually as we reach up into that higher nature. And we begin to listen 
to the voice of, of intuition. It's gazing at the glory of God, looking, looking at the magnificence, the ever expanding magnificence of the universe that I am, and it's trying to guide you to it. It's trying to bring you into it. This is why religious science, Dr. Holmes' book, The Science of Mind, and all the ideas that it suggests, says, says that, that to be a religious scientist means only two things. That daily we meditate, meaning quieting the mind. And meditation, as Dr. Holmes said, is to, to in-breathe the life force so that we're in-breathing the life force. Because what, what we call that repetitive mind, or as Charles Lynch called the neurotic thought patterns of the mind, are, we tend to repeat themselves monotonously, meaning it goes round and round and round. But you are, you are not that the, the, the spinning of your mind, the firing of your mind. You are the one who has a mind that is firing. And if it's firing in a way that's causing you to be less than, to feel less than whole and complete and perfect, then, then the other part of being a practitioner, of practicing this idea, is to use that affirmative prayer, which was done so nicely by our hostess this morning, right? That to use that affirmative prayer to direct the life force toward whatever area of your life needs healing. Uh, so that, that has been broken down. Robert Bitzer, another great uh, teacher uh, in the field, broke that down to, well, how does that come out in our lives? Well, in our lives, okay, you need to get down. No, this is Casper, everybody. Hello, Casper. He, he, he likes to be involved in these discussions. Okay, so you and I need to look at, at if, if, if the law of the circle or the law of mind by means of everything that I've thought, said, done, and felt is returning to me as the multi-dimensional experience of my life, then where do I look to find out how to release the anxieties, to open to the flow of a greater good, to participate in, in the joy of life? Where do I look? The answer is you look at your life. And Dr. Bitzer laid out these four areas that we could look at our lives. Health, wealth, love, and purpose. So if we look at our body and the body is uh, not coming out demonstrating that which is the perfect pattern of our body, this is, this is why we know we have to reach up to our soul nature because our soul nature isn't sick. Our soul nature is not participating in disease. Our soul nature isn't in agreement that disease has to have any dominance in your life. Our soul nature is gazing at the glory of the most high, the wholeness, the beauty, the ever expanding magnificence of life itself. It's gazing at it and saying, who can you see that to the personal self? It's saying, Harry, can you see that? And so if I'm if I look at my health and it's not doing that, I, I go back and I affirm that I am. I am the one that came from the light, whole, complete and perfect in an idealized pattern for my expression, which is my body. And it has a right to be radiant, vibrant, dynamic health, right? And so this is where we work. If, if there's something aching in the body or things are going wrong, we will return back to that I am presence. And we dwell on that I am presence. And we call that presence as the light of the Christ, the Atman, the Buddha, the high self. We call that into our lives in health. So wealth. Here's a great affirmation that Dr. Holmes wrote years and years ago. I've been teaching this affirmation and I have seen it literally transform people's lives. And here's the affirmation. Good and more good is mine. There's no limit to the good that is mine. Everywhere I look, I see this good. I feel it. It crowds itself against me, flows through me and multiplies itself around me. Good and more good is mine. Wow. So that we begin to open ourselves that the source of my good isn't this job or that job or this project or that project. Those may be the ways that it's coming to you. But the source of your good is that which your soul is calling forth to you as the avenues and instruments through all the ways prosperity can flow to you and through you. That you begin to, to wake up 
to the, to the glory that my soul is already looking at and listen to it. That intuition, the voice of God in me, as me, through me is guiding me, but I must tune into it. And that means tune out the clatter and the clutter of the world. So daily we meditate and daily we use the power of our consciousness to direct it in the way that we want. Good and more good is mine. There's no limit to that good. We direct it to radiant, vibrant, dynamic health, right? And then love, perfect love, cast out all fears, perfect love. How much love is in your experience? You know, I am I am blessed, as was already shared with you, I'm blessed to have two beautiful adult children who all have children, and I have six grandchildren. And all of us, every time we see each other, say, I love you. All of us hug. All of us laugh and carry on and bring joy into our love and, and share experiences into our love. And I do this with my family, and I do this with my friends. So even friends who are not used to having people say, I love you. Is it because you think that what, he said, I love you. What, what, wow. <laughs> no, that should be normal to have people tell you that they love you as you tell people that you love them. That should be normal. The overflowing cup of love should not just be with one person, your partner and your mate. It has nothing to do with your sexuality. It may include that in, in as expression, but it has to do with with. The vibration coming from you is, is that vibration. Are you bringing the love that you only you and your unique way can bring to the world? Personal love, universal love throwing, flowing through you and becoming personal to you. Health, wealth, love and purpose. And this is where we go back to where I started. I choose to comfortably live my life and fulfill my purpose. Who I am is the Christ, the Atman, the Buddha, the high self, the glory of God incarnated as me. And it is my job to knock on the door. And we were all given instructions. The great master teacher gave everybody the instructions of how to do it. So not doesn't belong to a religion. How do I bring this greater good into my life? Ask for it. Ask for it. Seek, ask, and then move in the direction of that which you've asked for. What what is the phone call I need to make? What is the kindness I can express? What is it that I can do today that will that will match the dreams I'm seeking to fulfill, right? Ask and seek and go after it. Move in the direction of it. Any baby step in the direction of your dreams is how the universe works with you to bring you the greater good. One thing leads to another, unfolds to another, and it unfolds vibrationally as it goes out, right? So this is where we are right now in our world. We're at a place where we need to, to withdraw from the clutter and the clamor of the world, daily focus on that which is my true and eternal nature, remind myself that I have a right to comfortably live my life and fulfill my purpose, fulfill my purpose. I came from the light. I came from the light to support an awakening world. It's not your job to wake up the world. You came to do your part, and that's all you have to do. And you might find that your world continues to get to reveal, behold, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's here. That my good continues to unfold even in the midst of the race's uh, belief in prejudice and the race's belief in war and the race's belief in violence and the race's belief that anger is a real and authentic power. Those are false ideas. And you do not have to participate in them. That's why we call our teaching transcendental. It transcends the lower levels and causes us to move up to a higher level. And who you are is that immortal soul that came with a mission to fulfill your life in joy, in love, completely at every level. And yes, there will still be human things that happen. I'll tell you this quick story. And then I need one of my moderators to tell me time. I didn't look at the time uh, and I'm, I have no track of it. So somebody let me know how many minutes we got left. I don't, I don't want to stake your time beyond what's, what, what is ours to share today. So here's an example. You know, we said, God, you have a great resume or you've done all these wonderful things. And uh, yes, and you're still human and you, you still will make mistakes. And hopefully when you make a mistake, 
you 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 let the law take care of it. I made a mistake. I pay for it, and and now I move on. So I want to just tell you the story, and I will tell you this story if you're on Coffee with Casper on Tuesday. You'll have to hear it a- again. <laughs> but it's but it's a really great example of how our vibration supersedes even our smallness. That when we begin to entune ourselves with our own soul, I am that, that which is love and light and joy and wisdom and peace and poise and the beauty of the most high, expressing itself as love and light and joy in this day, right? This is mine to do, to daily meditate, to breathe it in, to accept the glory of the I am that I am, to quiet the mind and participate in. And then with that awareness that you are that eternal soul, to bring it out into the world. Well, the other day was my son-in-law's birthday. I had a bunch of errands to run. If you may have heard here in Los Angeles County, we had a big freeway failure. So the navigators were sending people all kinds of weird ways to go do whatever their work in the city was. So it was sending me a, a route that I don't normally travel through a part of town that I'm not usually in, but I wanted to get a birthday card uh, on behalf of my wife and I for our son-in-law. And uh, I said, well, if I see a drugstore or something on this route, I'll pull over and get it. Well, I pulled into this parking lot at, at the edge of uh, Venice and Santa Monica, where there's a lot of homeless people. And I saw all kinds of police activity. Uh, and, and then when I got into the parking lot, I couldn't find the drugstore. Uh, and I'm looking around for the drugstore and something within me said, uh, this isn't the right place to, to shop right now. You, you should just go. And then I turned in the parking lot and I saw the drugstore and I said, oh, it's right there. So I had a voice of intuition that said, this is not your place. And I went in anyway, just to get my errand done. And when I came out, I dropped my wallet, credit cards, cash, information, just just the worst thing in the world. You, if you've ever lost your wallet, you know how bad that feels. It's like, oh my God. And I didn't realize I dropped it. I drove 20 minutes before I realized I didn't have my wallet. So I immediately call the drugstore. I'm calling the drugstore and then my phone rings and some unknown number. And so I answered the unknown number because I was in, in a state. And the person says, her name was... Uh, yeah, yeah, I think. And and she says, I, I think I found your wallet. I said, oh, my God. She said, don't worry. Don't worry. I, I have it. And so I'm still worried. I'm so mad at myself for dropping it and not noticing that I'm dropping it. I made this human error, and I'm just so frustrated myself, and I'm driving in traffic back to try to find this woman and get my wallet, and I had money in it, and, and I just thought, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. And I get there. And this wonderful soul, happened to be an African-American woman, just vibrating with light, says to me, you know, you must do something wonderful in the world because you're protected. Your, your wallet was here surrounded by homeless people, surrounded in this not very good neighborhood. And I got it. And I found your business card and I called you. And here's your wallet. Everything was in it. The cash was in it. The cards were in it. Nothing had been touched. And she said to me, and I didn't look through your wallet. I said, did you know I'm a minister? She said, no, I didn't know. But I knew because I didn't look through your wallet. But but I knew you had to be somebody doing something because I knew I wouldn't take your wallet and I would help you find it. And I did. You see, the vibration that you put out comes back to you as your experience. And even in your humanness, your vibration of love and light and truth, the vibration of goodness that you're seeking to bring into the world because you know that you are one with the one, that the one is moving in you and as you, through you, as your unique individuality, as your unique personality, that you are the glory of God. And that comes back to you, even in a world that's confused, even in a giant city, in the wrong neighborhood, my wallet got picked up by a soul who was so kind and so generous and so filled with light that she did the right thing and gave it back to me completely as she found it. Now, that to me is just such a demonstration 
that the vibration that you're putting out is returning to you as your experience. And it takes the sum total of your consciousness, everything you think, say, do, and feel, and it magnifies it and returns it as the multiple dimension, multiple dimensional experience of your life. Who you are is more than enough. Who you are is the glory of the Most High. Who you are is the divine with skin on. Who you are is a wonderful being of light, and you can bring more and more of that light into your world through your thoughts, through your attitudes, and through your daily practice. If you don't have a daily practice, you're in touch with CSL Midtown. Hang out. Go learn. Learn how to calm the mind. Learn how to build affirmations. Learn how to do an affirmative prayer in a way that's not beseeching to the Most High, but is your cosmic power moving in expression as you. This is what it's all about. And this is why we're connecting today. This is why you're hearing this lesson today. This is why you're connecting into CSL Midtown, because the world is waiting for you to just shine your light a little bit brighter, to bring a little bit more love, to bring a little more creativity and to experience more and more good because there's no limit to the good that you can experience. It denies no one of their good. Your good denies no one of their good. Who you are is something magnificent. So I invite you to go in the light, as the light and with the light, to remember that the long time sun shines upon you, that you may have a long and prosperous life, that all love surrounds you, and the pure light within you is guiding you on your way. I'm Harry Morgan Moses. You're at CSL Midtown today. We're sure glad you're here, and I'm certainly glad I had the opportunity to share with you this morning. And I'm coming back. Here we go. Thank you. What a wonderful doc Dr. Moses had for us today in that transcendent trans transformational thinking process that is available to all of us. And I want to offer you the opportunity with this spiritual food to contribute to us financially to support this ongoing ministry that we have for sharing with life. So if you would, there you can donate online at cslmidtown.org slash donate or scan the QR code. It'll take you right to the donation site. And let's say our affirmation of prosperity. I live in a universe of abundance. As I freely and joyfully give, I join in the divine flow. And all that I share with life returns to me multiplied abundantly. And so it is. And uh, in this transition time that we're doing between ministers, we're having these amazing speakers and want to invite you to continue to come visit with us every Sunday. We're online except for the first Sunday of the month. The first Sunday of the month, we're in person at the Garden Hills Community Center. So next week we are online again and um, hope everybody has a fantastic Thanksgiving this week with friends or family or whoever you're spending, sharing your time with this week. So I invite you to do that. And after this, we have a discussion group to on two on. Well, on Tuesdays at noon, there's a uh, practitioner available to talk from noon to 1230. If you've got anything going on that you just need a little spiritual midweek boost that's available. And on Sundays at 10 a.m. before the service, there's a discussion group so you can join us there and so we'll see you next week online and if you want to talk more with dr moses we're going to be on zoom right after this to have a little discussion to expand on what he talked about today so if you will say with me our affirmation of life i leave this place now knowing something better than i knew before I go forth into the world with a heart full of love and a mind full of good sense. I look at the world in a greater way, knowing that I have within me everything I need to create the life I desire. 
I give thanks for this understanding. And I am grateful for the spirit of life that lives through me. And so it is. We'll see you next week. Have an awesome week, everybody. There is a power for good in the universe greater than you are. And you can use it.